Everybody, this is the Enough to Keep Going podcast, episode number ten. Your host, Osiris Prime. Yes, I'm finally back. It's been what two weeks now? I think it seems like a lot longer. But uh, we're actually um, we're recording on Tuesday today, so uh, and it is August twenty second. We're moving up here uh, one day, and I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit here. But first, uh, I'm going to introduce to our my co-host here, Mr. DBQ Hand. DB, it's been a long time since I think we've been on the podcast together. It has been a long time. I was out, and then you were out. This is the the end of summer vacation time, so it's good to be back together. But I'm I'm looking at your uh, your tagline here, and no SNES classic for you, along with millions of other people, as <laughs> as things got again botched in the the rollout of, of pre-orders. Right? Nintendo was so great about saying it's coming, and then it all just trickles out at random times. And yeah, it's. Anyhow, but I'm glad to not be talking about that tonight. So <laughs> that's right. We'll just so leave it up to my tagline there, and, that, and that's it. So, what are we talking about tonight, Prime? Well, uh, so as usual, we'll go through our playlists and we'll go through uh, our topic of the week, which we'll get to here in a second. Well, we're going to talk about Gamescom, which is uh, starting up this week, or I think Monday, actually. Maybe even today was the official day, I think. Uh, I think they usually have like the press stuff uh, at first, and then and they go through the, the public. Um, the public uh, days. But uh, first up, a little uh, business I want to talk about the network. Like I mentioned, we're on Tuesday now. Uh, Mondays wasn't going to work for a couple of us here, actually the two of us, really. Um, so uh, everybody was gracious enough to actually move it up a day so we can all do it. We can all be on, you know, this is our core show, so, you know, we all kind of want to be on it, or at least three of us. Uh, unfortunately, today there's only two of us. Uh, Zeus is taking much needed break. He's been on the podcast, I think, since we started here, actually, at least on the Enough to Keep Going um, network here uh and then um swiss guards off too he's got uh just some issues or not issues but some things to take care of so but he's doing good uh so you know uh we're gonna do tuesdays now thursday's still gonna be our new show uh that'll that'll come up this thursday and and hopefully every thursday after that uh and then of course we have the uh, dark matters uh dark hypothesis uh show on wednesdays i believe at eight i think uh Eastern, maybe that's nine Eastern. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. But uh, so we're gonna do that, and then uh, one more, one more thing. I just want to say it was uh, you guys did a great job these last couple of weeks. Uh, I wish I could have been on some of those shows, especially the the core show. Just when you're talking about you know the topic, uh, you had some good uh, good topics that you guys were talking about. And uh, one thing I was disappointed on though, DB, you and Swiss Guard, the same show, no nerdiness. Come on. Oh, I know. Well, you know, y- you weren't there to bring it out of us. We're trying to be all buttoned up with Zeus on the podcast, <laughs> keep, it, keep it straight and narrow. So, no, we uh, yeah, we almost had we had plenty of opportunities. I think I, I, I don't know. There was a little bit of Picard talk. There was some yeah, I think Star the last Trek, one. yeah, Star Trek conversations in there. So you know, it wasn't quite at the normal level of nerdiness that I may bring. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities to make up for that. That's right. We'll rectify that. Maybe I don't know about this show, but maybe the next show. We'll see. We'll see when we get more more people on here to get nerdy here. Um, but yeah, and uh, I think uh, Swiss Guard, he hosted, I believe, last Thursday on the new show. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. Um, but look, I did was, not. No, yeah, I was he was hosting. So, nice. That's yeah, great. So he did a really good job. So it's very good. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get going with the episode here. We'll, uh, we'll start off with our topic of the week. And uh, like I said, we're going to talk with game, about Gamescom. And then maybe we'll go into uh, the state of the Xbox, kind of go into the holiday in uh, early 2018, uh, just kind of see, you know, what they got going on or, or you know, what's going to happen with, with the Xbox. We had some delays, so another delay that came up, uh, and we'll talk about that. But I'm going to kick it over to you for Gamescom. Uh, any good news that you saw coming out uh, these last couple of days so far? So, yeah, I think there's a couple of things. You know, this was not quite uh, the... E3 level that Gamescom has tried to be at some points in time. You know, it's also, there's been times when Gamescom has been a lot of new trailers and new demos uh, kind of showing how games have progressed since E3. Uh, We did get some new trailers. You know, we got a Destiny 2 launch trailer. We got a whole lot more of Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, You know, but there we got a lot of gameplay of things that we knew about. 
I think the things that we didn't know about are, are kind of fun. Uh, Biomutant, right? This is uh, by X Just Just Cause developers. It's an action RPG with some type of like uh, kung fu cat rabbit, almost like a rocket raccoon type of looking thing. A uh, variety of characters looks kind of. It's a new IP. Uh, not really sure what to expect, but I think the fact that it's not just X sequel, you know, uh, you know, or licensed property makes it a little more interesting to me. It's something that I don't really know a lot about in terms of you know what it's going to end up being, but it's nice to see people kind of flex their creative muscle and and see what they can come up with. So, you know, I think that that is something that was interesting to me. I think the other piece that my son and I were just talking about yesterday uh, was the Jurassic Park announcement, right? To Jurassic Park, uh, you know, basically Jurassic Park tycoon or you know this the the park builder it's made by the roller coaster um uh the new developers not roller coaster tycoon but the Sue uh, tycoon no it's a it's on it's on pc it's a roller coaster sim and park building i'll have to look it up here as we're talking oh okay so, um, but it's it's made by them, uh, you know, and again, not a game coming out this fall, but a kind of a surprise announcement. I mean, it makes a whole lot of sense to have something come out with the new Jurassic Park uh, coming out next summer, but the idea of it being a park builder, you know, there was 16-bit games and old PC games that were Jurassic Park builders back in the the original Jurassic Park. So it'd be kind of fun and interesting to see what uh, what that ends up being like. Roller Coaster Tycoon. So I'm going to uh, dig around there. You know, I think there's some other announcements, right? Nintendo had yep. some in the last couple of days. You were, uh, as a Switch owner now, uh, anything there that got you interested and excited? Uh, well, yeah, there's a, a few uh, news tidbits that came out. Uh, and part of me here, I'm, I'm actually working off my, my Surface and my PC at the same time because I couldn't get the, uh, the links transferred over fast enough. Uh, but yeah, we have some Splatoon news. Uh, they have some free content coming up uh, soon. They didn't, uh, I don't think they gave that release date yet. Uh, no, not for, uh, there's a new map coming out. Um, Manta Maria, uh, which is joining the uh, Turf War and Ranked Battle stages. Uh, actually coming this weekend. And then a uh, new Lost Outpost, uh, excuse me, Outpost stage, which is going to be in the rotation for Salmon Run, uh, which I don't know. Have you got the chance to play Salmon Run at all? I know there are those I times are like weird because they just throw it up there for like, what, an hour or two or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, I know my, my son has played it uh, a little bit, but not a whole lot. So, no, I have not got a chance to play some Salmon yeah, Run. Right. Yeah, I played it a few times, uh, I think mostly on the weekends. Uh, I think maybe once during the week when I was at work, I was playing during lunch. Uh, see, take it on the go. You can play it a lot. There you go. <laughs> play that a lot, the Switch. But uh, yeah, it's actually pretty fun. On it's kind lunch, of a, sure. It was lunch. lunch. It was lunch. I might have taken, you know, maybe a little bit longer than I should have, but uh, that's all right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, kind of like a like a horde mode almost, I, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, it is very much like a horde mode. Yeah, so, but it's pretty fun. Uh, a little bit more, a variant on... You know other horde modes where you gotta kind of pick up things and get them back to like the central location and stuff like that. But so we got a new map for that, and then uh, let's see what else we got. Um, a new uh, new weapon, the bubble blower, which will be available yep. um, September first, I believe. It looks like here, and the Forge Splatter Shot Pro. I'm not sure what that is. Splatter Shot is that the sniper, the Splatter Shot? Yes, I think so. No, I'm not sure. I'm I can't remember right now. To know. But, uh, so, yeah. So and then got... over over in arms, we get a punch a clown. Is that right? <laughs> yes, we get a new character coming out. Uh, another another free update, which is good. There's a lot of free mm -hmm. updates. Just, oh, well, I shouldn't say it's surprising. I mean, they're usually pretty good with that stuff. So, uh, the street performer uh, Lola Pop, uh, a well-traveled clown, according to this article, with a personality as colorful as her clothing. So that's nice. So, uh, so some of her abilities, she can inflate her body uh, to like a balloon, and I guess that gives her some more uh, defensive capabilities or ups her defense basically. Uh, and then there's going to be three new arm stages uh, that that they're going to come out also, and they don't say when, unfortunately, for uh, the arm stuff. And... I think that's early September. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but yeah, so some arm and split two news. And then uh, the last bit of news was uh, about the actually the Super NES uh, Classic, 
uh, was they just announced that there's a rewind feature basically in the game, and you can uh, depending on the game, you can you know you might be able to go back you know 30 seconds or a minute or you know it depends on you know what the game you're playing. So kind of a neat feature, I guess, if you know you screw up on something and you want to you know rewind and and start over. So. I guess. Yeah, it's a great feature. I have it. Uh, the Disney Afternoon Collection by Capcom this spring had it, you know, to be able in like DuckTales and Rescue Rangers to rewind a little bit. And that was a very beneficial piece. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So Nintendo, and we also had some Sony news, right? We got some new trailers a little bit with Destiny 2. Again, not a Sony game, but definitely has some deep pockets uh, there for some extra content. Shamu 3. Right, we actually got a trailer for this kickstarted game that Sony announced back on their platform at E3 three years ago, four years ago at this stage, 2014 maybe. Uh, it has a real trailer. It's still looking to come out, and there was news the other week as uh, talked about. Right, that it's it's got a, a publisher now as well. Um, and as although Zeus is not here, there is a GT sport console that is coming out a silver and black gran turismo uh playstation console that is coming out as well oh yeah i saw that yeah i'm sure he'll be happy about that yeah i mean he'll be happy <laughs> at least the fact that the game is coming out is is you know is probably just enough right there so did you get a chance to see any of the EA news uh, coming out? I watched a little bit of the live stream with some Star Wars Battlefront uh, space battles, which looked pretty fluid, pretty interesting. Um, I didn't know that it needed to go on as long as it did, but I liked what I saw. I did not get to see the uh, any of the press conference. Uh, I did see the trailer for the, uh, the space battles, and I'm having some problems here with my one machine here, so I lost all my... Uh, Okay, well, I'll keep going. Then, Go ahead while I try to The get next this back news in. is so big, I know that you haven't forgot about it, but Cats and Dogs expansion is coming to Sims 4. So, finally, you can have your fake human have a fake pet. <laughs> Very important. Top billing at a press conference. Uh, no, uh, sarcasm aside, you know, the one announcement that I was really interested in uh, at the EA one was what they were going to do with Battlefront or Battlefield, right? Not Battlefront so much because we know what's coming there. But with Battlefield, at E3, they had talked about that they were going to do some type of competitive mode. Kind of, they talked about it in terms of getting into potentially even some esports. And so, but they didn't really say what was coming and so now we got some some more details there this is a five on five incursion mode where there's going to be some different classes uh, five different four different types of of player classes some of them are different than um you know what is in the the regular uh, big team battles that battlefield is known for so it'll be interesting to see what that ends up looking like in terms of each each class has a role to play similar to as the four standard classes do but a little more diversity there um i'd be really interested to see what that looks like and how how sweaty it ends up getting and, and challenging or you know or, or but again it's going to have it's going to have some tanks it's going to have some vehicles it's still going to have you know they're trying to try to figure out how to capture that battlefield feel within a little more fast paced and a little more um, stream ready uh, type of competition so uh, but that so that was interesting but the thing i'm excited for as a season pass owner for battlefield 1 is the um, the revolution content, uh, right? The the newest set of the expansion pass that's coming out, revolution set in um, Russia during the winter, and it's also going to give us um, some of the Russian uh, female soldiers for the first time in Battlefield history that uh, players will be able to choose to play as a female, as a, a couple other, another class that's coming as well. So I think that's a, a neat addition there and kind of uh, helps, you know, uh, another, another, I don't know if it's, should we really pat publishers on the back for being gender inclusive at this stage? But between, you know, the NBA, the WNBA and now Battlefield here, it definitely seems like EA is at least being intentional about what they're trying to, to put out and aware that the people that are playing their games are not, you know, who are stereotypically seen as gamers, who are even represented on this podcast, you know, that it's it's good for them. So 
there I'm off my soapbox, but we've talked about Sony, we've talked about Nintendo, we have uh, the, uh, you know, the one that led off the show was Microsoft, and so there were, a, Microsoft used this as a platform for, for lots of announcements, it seemed like, a lot more than the other two publishers, and even, you know, even the third-party publishers didn't, a lot of what we got were things that we knew about, and in the Xbox case, we got some things that were leaked, we got some things we knew about, but we got some more details as well. Yeah, but actually, before we get to the Xbox, they did uh, mention one game, which I was actually kind of surprised about, was Age of Empires 4. I don't know if you saw that or not. Uh, yes, I did see that. Yep, that was that it is uh, a real game coming, and not just the the HD version that they had talked about before. So, yeah, did yeah, you play the previous uh, games? I played Age of Empires 2 uh, way back in the day. Uh, it was probably one of the few real-time strategy games that I actually played. So... Yeah, so uh, that was kind of caught me by surprise, but it seems like it makes sense. You know, they've got they've got that IP sitting on their shelves, and they're definitely you know trying to figure out what they do with the IPs that they have. So nice to see them try to go back and do something with it. Yeah, it, it, and I didn't. I kind of just saw the headlines, and I read some articles here and there. But was that coming to consoles too, to the Xbox too, or was that just PC? Or did they not mention anything? Oh, now you're going to make me check, aren't you? <laughs> no, um... I'm just trying to see, but... It does not say. I mean, there is a trailer out there. So, Age of Empires 4, uh, it's company here. It's Relic who's doing it, who's company of heroes. So, it's coming from a good good pedigree. Yeah. Um, so, but no, unfortunately, I do not know um, if it's going to be any type of cross-play or cross-buy type of thing. Okay. All right, so let's jump to the the Xbox news here. So uh, I guess that kind of the big thing was their uh, their special edition Project Scorpio version of the Xbox One X. Um, is that making you? Did you pre-order that, uh, DB? Did you, get, did you get that? So I will say that I looked at the pre-order, and uh, the console looks pretty, right? I mean, it looks nice. It's it's sleek. It's slick. Um, you know, the Xbox uh, X. Uh, it looks like an Xbox. It's gonna, you know, it looks really nice. Um, no, I did not pre-order it. Yeah. I, I fought the temptation to put down five hundred dollars. Uh, as somebody who does not own a four K TV, uh, it was a little easier to do that. Um, but the allure of the new uh, definitely was tempting. So, so we got that uh, the Xbox, uh, the Scorpio edition, which again it kind of went up, sold out. Everything went relatively smoothly. Uh, but they also had the the Minecraft skin version. This one is just an yes. Xbox S, but I think it's pretty creative. You know, I think it's a it's a nice, and I won't take credit for this. I heard this on uh, another uh, on an IGN podcast, right? This is a, a nice kind of subtle way for Microsoft to remind people that they own this brand, and um, you know, it gets it out there in a a nice way, right? This is the 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 box is skinned as as the as the landscape, right? You've got grass on the top and some dirt underneath, and even you've got some red glowing lights in it for some redstone. Uh, and then you've got a creeper as a controller. You know, it's just kind of fun, creative. I could see that. You know, you put these two together on a shelf at the holiday time, and you've got a very kid-friendly box. And you know that no matter what price they sell it at, is going to seem like a a bargain compared to the Xbox One X. So, so I think that that's a, a nice announcement uh, there. You know, I think the other piece that was talked about uh, again, I think an, another nice get for Xbox this fall is the Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Right, this has been a PUBG has been a big game on the PC scene over the course of the summer. Uh, really been popular in, in the live stream aspects. And so having Xbox be the, the, the publisher of it for, for consoles, at least at this stage, um, is, a, is a, big, a big get for them. Yeah, I think they just announced like 8 million, I think, or 10 million uh, players, or it's been bought, I think, sold, something like that. Yeah. Yep, and this is a you know it's a paid game in early access, you know, so they're they're doing pretty well for themselves as a as an Arma mod and and team a developer that's putting this together. So 
That's coming. Is that coming for a game preview? I believe, right? First. Yes, and part? that's that's part of the the rationale that they were able to provide in terms of why it's only coming out on Xbox right now is that they Sony does not have a, a preview program or an early access program, and because Xbox does, it allows them to release it in that capacity, even as they're continuing to not treat it as a full release product and are modding, or, you know, are continuing to update and patch it as. As releases come forward, so so that piece a nice uh, a nice PC get for for Xbox. You know, rare was there because uh, this is Europe, and we got some Sea of Thieves uh, conversations, and it is going to support crossplay between PC and Xbox. So I think that that's uh, you know again uh, not just. Uh, you know, cross play, cross buy, but cross play, right? Not only can you buy it once and play it on both, both platforms, but you'll be able to play with people on on either way. So, as a game that's multiplayer focused, to me that feels like a, a good idea. It it provides probably a stronger long term player base by combining those together. Um, think of other announcements on the Xbox side. Okay, so those are the good ones. So. Do you have any others that were exciting to you? Or otherwise, I'm going to go into one that I'm personally kind of interested in, but also kind of confused by. Okay. So, uh, just, yeah. just uh, two things, quick things. Hopefully, I don't, I don't steal your, your thing here. But uh, there was another. Uh, there's going to be a Shadow of War, Xbox One S bundle. I don't know if there's going to be anything special with the actual uh, console, but they didn't announce that uh, coming up later this year. And uh, the Recore is that what you're going to talk about? So Recore. Go ahead. <laughs> so Recore is one of the things I was going to talk about. So, but there's other things that confuse me about some of their other game announcements. So go ahead and talk about the Recore one, and and we'll keep okay. going. Okay. Yeah. So they announced the the Recore Definitive Edition uh, that'll be coming out. Oh, I didn't say here, but unfortunately, coming yeah. out the the end of this month. It okay. is it is coming out fast and and quick. It is twenty dollars. It is, if you already own the original game, if you purchased it like I did back last fall, uh, it's a free update for all of us, which I think is, is, a, is a really good gesture for people that got frustrated with that game. You know, people went into it with a lot of promise. People also knew the end game was kind of dragged out for the sake of collectathons. Uh, you know, and I think the, one of the... The big pieces that the, the Definitive Edition gets, and this is what was leaked uh, months ago, was that it adds one of the, the robot partners back into the game. So there were supposed to be five robotic helpers throughout the game. There was only four in the release product. The posters, even the images on the box, had a fifth uh, helper, had a fifth robot, but it never actually made it into the game. There were areas in the game that you were that were unaccessible without that robot. So whether or not it was supposed to be DLC and they never quite got around to it, you know, the sales numbers didn't, you know, weren't strong enough to kind of give them a reason to do DLC. I don't know how, you know, what the backstory here was or if if Microsoft really needed to to lock in and push a September release before last year's um, Forza and what else did we get last year? Gears of War 4? You know, maybe that was a piece of it, too, that they were kind of locked into the release schedule. I'm not sure. You know, I so part of me is really interested in it. You know, I, I really enjoyed about four or five hours into the game. Graphics were pretty jaggy. So this is going to give a good overpass on those. It's going to, you know... Uh, provide some better textures it's going to push it up to 4k um you know the bigger question is, is if it does any other type of balancing pieces in the late game and maybe by adding in a new area and a new robot that the kind of having to go back and collect so many other things to get to the final area um won't be the same because you'll have more gameplay opportunities within the the narrative of the story versus go back and collect all those hidden ones because we left out, you know, 15% of the game. So I, I, that's that's my re recore rant. But, you know, as somebody who saw a lot of promise in this, uh, this game, uh, unfortunately, it's kind of probably going to be too little too late, you know, for it to be salvageable. But I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like they're going to throw up on uh, Game Pass also. So maybe yes. it'll find legs there. 
Yeah, I think that might actually be, it's a nice, it's one of the first, you know, kind of newish updates, releases that have come out on Game Pass, right? We've got, you know, the lot of the Gears and Halo 5, and, you know, we've got other bits and pieces, but we haven't really got a, a new release or a must-have game on Game Pass. I'm not saying that this is going to be a must-have game in Recar, but at least it's something new for people to have access to versus um, just stuff that's been out on the markets and for sale for quite a while. So, so if people are interested in Recor, if you want to take a, a, you know, if you haven't tried Game Pass already, you still get a 14-day free trial, and that's plenty of time. Uh, you know, I'm, I sold off my Recor uh, game a while back, actually, to in my my build up to Switch, uh, but I still have my Recor hat. If you remember back from the Band of Gamers. Uh, episode and uh, I've still got a recourse skin sitting on my Xbox controller so I definitely want to go back and give this a try but one game that I'm not so sure that I'm going to go back and give a try are some of the Connect releases that so that Microsoft talked about as well right so they talked about um, that, yeah. the Pixar Connect game uh, Rush and then there is the Disneyland Adventures which you might remember from the 360 Connect days it had the Disney castle on it um, where you're basically kind of doing a walking tour exploration of Disneyland Park with your also reliable Connect sensor and uh, then a Zoo Tycoon uh, re-release as well so uh, so this is where it gets confusing and kind of concerning is that Recore and these Connect releases, when their new consoles don't even have a Connect port in them, it, I'm not sure. You know, maybe there's a different market in Europe that I'm not catching, and this is why it was held to Gamescom. But I also wonder if this is, uh, with the announcement of Crackdown Three being delayed, if this is Xbox and Microsoft trying to just f put anything into the pipeline to have as things on the shelf for this holiday season. Yeah, I mean, I, you know what? I saw that I did see this. I saw this on a Facebook group. And it was just a picture of it. I didn't I didn't go through and read the article because I thought they were just like riffing on on those games or something. I didn't even notice it was Xbox One. Now that I'm looking at the picture here, I pulled it up just now. And that's I, I just I didn't even know what to say about that. I mean, it's just weird. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, you know, the Xbox One S and um, the X also won't have the you know that connect port. So I mean, I know there's an adapter. You can get an adapter for it, but still, it's just like, what are they thinking here? I mean, I don't understand. Sometimes I just don't understand. Maybe that's just me because I'm not you know uh, you know a game person. I'm not in the business. I'm not marketing guy. You know, I don't I don't do that. That's not my job. But uh, I just I just don't get like something like this. And okay, I'm gonna understand Crackdown Three being delayed. You know, obviously they want to you know polish it up, and it is being delayed, uh, you know, a good bit. I mean, not until spring, I believe they said. Um, you know, and that's fine. Uh, you know, delays are, are fine, as, you know, as long as they, you know, at the end result, you know, is you know is an awesome or at least a good game, decent game. So, I, I, I don't, I don't know about this. Like I said, I, this is kind of the first time I heard about it. I did see it, but it was just, it's just weird to me now. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I mean, I'm sure it, it probably isn't super costly to go up and, and remaster those. Uh, but I think they've moved so far away from anything Connect at this stage, like you said, with the, the consoles not even having a port in them, that it just seems strange to to catch this. You know, unless they're going to be some type of bundle that's coming out this holiday, you know, that they're going to target it again at some type of family bundle or... Yeah, I, I don't know, but I don't... You know... Uh, maybe it's part of what comes up in Game Pass that they're going to be pushing back out Connect games. It, it feels like, and so maybe this is where we should kind of move into our topic of of Xbox for the fall. But it feels like there's not a clear direction of of what Xbox is going for this fall. You know, and I don't know that there was even after E3. You know, definitely the big focus was on the Xbox X. You know, having the the best console that was ever created, having the most powerful console that was ever created, maybe not the best, most powerful, um, you know, having that as kind of their big push, you know, they did announce at Gamescom that they were going to have over 100 games that are going to be uh, kind of enhanced for, for 4K resolution, for working with the Xbox X, you know, which is 
which is good and great, but my concern is that there's not a whole lot coming out that's unique to Xbox. Uh, you know, uh, as someone who was moved toward Xbox because of games like Cuphead, you know, it's finally coming out. I'm excited about oh, that. Yeah. I'm going to put my $20 down, but then the rest of the time I'm looking at my Xbox and other than Forza, there's nothing else really that is coming that I can't play either on my PC or I can't play on a PlayStation 4. And so uh, what's the what's the the sell here in terms of of how they they keep a foothold in the holiday sales or you know what's their Crackdown 3 was going to be their big reason to buy the Xbox X um, you know, and is there, other than a really pretty driving game, is there anything else that's going to move the needle for them? Well, it's funny you mentioned that, because I'm looking at my list right now, and there's plenty that they got coming out. They got Sea of Thieves. Yeah, oh, next well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, yeah, next. that's Q2 okay. 2018. All right. Oh, yep. all right. State of Decay. Okay, yep, yep. I'm glad to be proven wrong. Keep going. Player that's Unknown Q2. Battleground. Actually, right? that's Q2 uh, 2018 also. Uh, oh, okay, Sorry about so that. that's... Uh, we got we do have Forza, like you said, or Forza. Yep. Yeah, how do you say that? How do you say it? Forza or Forza? I say Forza. Forza, okay. I'll just Forza, Forza Motorsports. I, you know, I truthfully go back and forth. So <laughs> yeah, we do. Zeus is not here to correct us in our our driving etiquette or what wheel and pedals we should be using. So we'll we'll just you know we'll take we'll take the T, we'll drop the T. It'll be okay. If he's watching right now. Or when he watches later, because I know he will. He likes to watch, uh, you know, when he's not on. I'm sure he's uh, face palming right now. Cause, you know, I'm sure. You know. yeah. uh, we do have it's Cuphead. Just... That's September 29th. Yep. So that's good. And like, like you said, uh, PUBG's coming. Well, should be coming out? I don't know. Does it give a... Yeah. No, it's PUBG's coming out. They, they're still targeting uh, late uh, this year. So okay. holiday season is is still kind of the, the target there. Okay. Yeah. I just wasn't sure if they had, you know put an actual release date uh, since no, the last they couple days or not. Nope. Okay, and um, actually, that's it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's it. Oh, that's it, right? <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, crackdown's obviously delayed, too. Um, yeah, I mean, I know they're making Oh, wait, big... hold, oh, hold oh, on. Go ahead, go ahead. Super Lucky's Tale. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's coming out next month, too? Or no? That's coming out it, soon, uh, right? in November. Oh, November. I thought for some reason I thought it was like the next couple weeks for some reason. No, that's Knack. That's coming out at the beginning of September. Is oh, okay. Uh, you know, and so I, I say that with some, you know, snark in my voice. But truthfully, uh, you know, you and I are both Nintendo people. The, the idea of a cutesy 3D platformer for $30, uh, I'm on board for that. You know, that doesn't sound that bad at all. You know, I, I'm definitely interested in it, but it's, you know... Although, okay, so maybe I'm going to pitch this angle, right? So we've got a Minecraft console. We've got some Disney and Pixar adventure games coming. We've got Super Lucky's Tale as a, a cutesy, you know, 3D platformer. We've got, um, you know, we've got Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Um, you know, maybe they grab something there. Uh, you know, Looks is like there... Sorry, go ahead. No, I, as you know, is there some type of bundle package that they put together this fall that you know? I definitely think they're gonna go at the one ninety nine mark, you know, because even at last Christmas time they were down in the two twenty five, two fifty range. And so, you know, do they make a play for for families that had not moved over to this console generation? You know, they get under that magical two hundred dollar mark and put together with a a Minecraft bundle that. You know, kids younger are going to be interested in. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that Minecraft uh, special edition Xbox One S though, because uh, price tag is I thought was a little high, three ninety nine for that. I mean, I, I get it that it's you know special edition. You know, it's a it's a skin more than just a skin. Actually, it looks like they you know they've done a lot to uh, the console and. Uh, maybe they have like special like noises and stuff, kind of like the Star Wars one had on the 360, and you know, oh, have, like, yeah. creeper controller. But I mean, oh, man, 399. I don't know. It just seems kind of pricey for just just a special edition. I think it might come with the game too. But I mean, I mean, who doesn't have Minecraft already? <laughs> come on, <laughs> they can really like drop that, and you know, they don't even have to give that with that with that bundle. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. As you know, I know they're pushing uh, with the X. Uh, with um, uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War, you know that's getting a lot of push, and 
looks like they got a lot of um, press for uh, or marketing for Assassin's Creed. Also, I think that that debut on E3 on their stage, or was that you Ubisoft's? Uh, Ubisoft had it, but Sony or not Sony, but Microsoft also had a big showing of it. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, they got that. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they're gonna you know lean you know, really heavily on uh, PUBG, which might. I mean, it's gonna be that's probably a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I don't know. I mean, even coming into you know early 2018, I don't know what. I mean, other than um, actually, I was gonna say to State of Decay, but those both that and Sea of Thieves is not until Q2. So I don't even know what they really have coming out the first half there, the first like three months or so of 2018. So yeah, I, uh, a little dicey. I mean, it is. It does feel dicey. It feels it feels like a re- I mean a relatively weak lineup. Granted, you know, if we did this thing same thing with Sony. There's not a whole lot there in Sony's portfolio that's coming out this fall that, you know, is going to, you know, you know, there's a few pieces there, right? I mean, I don't think NAC 2 is going to set the world on fire for anybody, but, you know, they do have GT. Um, you know, there's lots of games that are not coming this fall, uh, you know, with God of War or with Spider-Man, you know, um, Nino Kune is pushed back, you know. Oh, okay. I think um, they had some DLC for uh, Horizon, I believe, coming out. Yeah, no, that came out. Yeah, that's. Or did that come out already? Out. Yep, there's a, or it's coming out this fall, right? The it's up in kind of the frozen north area. Um, yeah, so that looks good. They just this there was a, just a recent patch as well about putting in a an easy kind of story mode aspect. Um, you know, so I'm, I I don't know that we should really. For as down as I feel about Xbox, it's more about trying to think about where they stake their claim in the market. Because I don't know that Sony is, you know, Sony may be trouncing them in numbers, but in terms of releases, they, their catalog is not all that stronger. Um, you know, there's uh, most things by the nature of development are need to be multiple platforms to be able to recoup some costs. So. Yeah, I, I and mean, maybe it comes down to the conversation that we had, you know, we've had multiple times of what's going to make somebody choose a, one platform or the other is really going to be about kind of their social friend base and, and where people they want to play with are at. Yeah, but I mean, you kind of mentioned it before about even at E3, they kind of seemed kind of lost. I don't want to say lost, but just like it wasn't like coherent almost. You know, they didn't. They showed a lot of games. I mean, that's good. But, I mean, a lot of those now are, you know, pushed back and, you know, till next year or we, some of them have been totally canceled. Like, um, what was the card game? The one that they re-released of that old uh, Xbox, original Xbox game that they, uh, they, Phantom Dust. That's what I was trying to think of. They canceled that. They canceled Scalebound. I mean, those are supposed to be, well, I don't know about so much of Phantom Dust, but Scalebound was supposed to be, you know, like this big game, I would assume, when it came out during the holiday. Um, so, I mean, it's just... I just don't know, you know, what's going on. I mean, I guess they kind of had to release the Xbox One X. I mean, the X, excuse me, they didn't really have, probably have a choice for that. They had to release it this, you know, holiday season without really a flagship title like, you know, Crackdown 3. I mean, they can't really push that back. You know, they've been touting it too much. But, I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm still going to play my Xbox. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, other than Nintendo, that's, you know, all I have. I'll probably get all the shooters on there like Battlefield and, I'm sorry, uh, Battlefront and you know, Call of Duty. I mean, unless they release it on the Switch, which I doubt this year, maybe next year. So, I mean, it'll probably still be, you know, my console, but I just don't see it. You know, a lot of, you know, day one buys coming up in the in the near future. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, as, as somebody who actively chose uh, Xbox over PlayStation, this console generation, up until just the last holiday cycle, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of good gaming hours on the Xbox One, and uh, you know, I think that for a long time it's had a lot to offer. It's had some good variety, you know. It's had things like Rare Replay, and you know, it, it also had a solid returns of franchises like Gears of War Four, you know, uh, but. I don't know. It feels like in terms of development wise, and maybe this is, they've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline, but they're just not ready to talk about it or it's not far enough along in development. Um, you know, but they don't really have a lot of internal game or even kind of second party studios that are producing a lot for them. 
you know, unlike, you know, unlike at Sony where they've cultivated those studios over the years, you know, Microsoft has had studios, you know, they had Lionhead, but they shut it down. Um, you know, right now they've got Rare, they've got 343, they've got uh, Turn 10, and they've got The Coalition, right? And at this stage, each of those kind of has a franchise attached to them. Um, you know, I don't know that there's a whole lot else out there and unless they start kind of letting some of those studios, you know, let the coalition do something that's not a Gears of War, let 343 loose on something that's not Halo or maybe Halo adjacent. I don't, I, I don't know. And, and maybe, you know, maybe it's the nature of how they built that business model of, of leaning heavily on their, their big 360 franchises and thinking that those titles would keep them moving forward. But it seems like they're in a they're in a similar situation like we talked about with Activision, where you know Activision's portfolio is getting thinner and thinner without without Blizzard or without King. You know they're they're a two game publisher, three game publisher at this stage. So yeah, I I'm kind of you know I'm I'm not disappointed that Crackdown Three is delayed because I'd rather have a game come out that's going to be solid and good. Um, but I am kind of disappointed about what the prospects look like for Xbox owners uh, this fall. Yeah, I mean, there's another uh, another game actually that I just I was just looking at, uh, Ark Survival Evolved, that it got delayed, but only for like a few weeks. It's coming out uh, actually next week. So, I mean, that's, that's something... That's been really that's... access for quite a while, though, right? You've played yeah. that on Xbox two years ago, even. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, not, not a huge delay, but still, I mean, I don't know if that was, they didn't really say in the article I'm reading right now, and even before, uh, when I first saw that announcement, why they did it, really, they were just kind of apologizing that it happened, so I don't know if that, maybe that's part of all this, maybe they were trying to get as much, you know, in that holiday, early holiday as they could, so, and like I said, it's, the, it's next week, so it's still, you know, technically summer, so, but, yeah. I don't know. But, well, I think we've, we've whooped, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know. put the whoop and down on uh, Xbox uh, long enough here. Let's move on and talk about something else. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's get a little positive here. Let's go with our, our playlists. Um, you want to jump in there first? Looks like you've played a lot of Madden actually on multiple systems. Yeah. So well, I was on the road for a good part of last week, which is why I was out. Um, so I two weeks ago I was talking about playing the Titanfall uh, mobile game, Titanfall Assault which the more I play it and the more I talk to my kids who are Clash Royale fans, uh, or at least were at one point, they went through a phase, right? We all go through a phase. Um, but it, I played it uh, daily for almost two weeks and it kind of hit that spot where I'm just going to have to keep kind of grinding and and feeding cards to get, to get leveled up. You know, I like some of the gameplay loop, you know, the kind of... It, it plays out like a domination or a hard point match where you're kind of controlling different spots and then attacking a base. There's, you know, the gameplay is actually fun, um, you know, but I'm, I'm as many mobile games as this happens, right? I'm kind of trailing off from it, um, which also happened to be right at the same time that that Madden on mobile gave a big update and patch for this coming season. So Madden, the game of the greatest. Uh, of all time, the GOAT edition comes out today, and Madden 18 for consoles comes out on Friday. Uh, but the mobile game came out a week prior, which really was great because it kind of whet my appetite for playing some more Madden. Uh, I played a lot being on the road. I played a lot of Madden on mobile, which is kind of, you know, fun and arcadey and lots of little challenges. Um, but then on EA Access, uh, EA Access members get 10 hours of a trial. So I've had a chance to to go in and see what Madden uh, looks like uh, on uh, on the Frostbite engine. And after playing nice. multiple days and hours, and you know even putting some cash into the mobile version, uh, it, it's a big difference. But you know I'm still playing the mobile version. It's it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. Nice. Yeah, I had a quick question. Uh, so is that, yeah. uh, do they like release a new version of the mobile Madden like each year too, as long as the, as well as the console version? 
so I'm going to say there is an update. You know, maybe it has a version number on it, uh, but it's still called Madden Mobile. Okay. Um, this has been the case. There was a Madden, you know, there was different iterations of Madden that had different numbers to them up until maybe uh, Madden 14, I'm going to say probably, maybe 15, uh, where there was a, a a change. Madden kind of retweaked some things on the mobile platform. I remember playing it on a tablet uh, a couple years ago at this point, probably three or four years ago. And the gameplay plays out pretty similarly. You know, you've got uh, some different daily challenges that kind of jump you around to different teams and practice areas. Uh, and then you can play through either head to head in a quarter by quarter, or you can play. Um, uh, against the computer. All of this feels very similar to what it was. I think what gets updated is, you know, they they tweak kind of the, the gameplay loop. They tweak, they tweak uh, obviously, rosters and the type of card packs. You know, there's, there's a whole lot more layers to the card packs and buffs and everything else than there was four years ago when I played it, you know, where it was about getting characters and getting players to build up your squad. Now there's also coaches and there's different training perks and other things. And, you know, like so many other mobile games, you can complete little quests and missions and, you know, get 30, 60 credits toward this thousand credit thing that you need to buy, right? There's ways to grind on on that. So, uh, but a lot of it plays out, you know, it's, you, it plays out really well on the touchscreen. It plays out, you know, like a PlayStation 1, um, you know, very arcadey, kind of not quite as far along as Blitz, um, but it's, it's very fast moving, uh, very accessible as well. So uh, the difference there of jumping from mobile Madden where it's just pretty arcadey and kind of dipping my toes into Madden 18 on, on Xbox is, is uh, there's a whole lot more in terms of, of controls, of stick movement, of strategy that uh, the console versions can give you. So, so both are fun, you know, um, depends on what type of, of experience you're looking for, but I'm really excited uh, and uh, having t Madden and Destiny were the games that got me into this generation to make the leap from last generation, and so uh, to see what Madden looks like on the Frostbite engine, which has been beautiful on Battlefront and Battlefield, uh, it's been kind of interesting to see what's possible there. So, nice. so there's my uh, are you ready for some football rant, but uh, how about you? It looks like uh, as we've been talking about games like Splatoon and Minecraft, you've got some of those uh, on your playlist as well. Yes, yeah, so it's been, it's been all Switch all the time for this past month, as uh, uh, Swiss Guard mentioned last week uh, on the show, on the core show. Uh, yeah, I've been playing nothing but the Switch uh, since I got it, pretty much. Um, bought Minecraft, obviously, because I have it on everything, like I, I mentioned in the past. Um, plus, so I play that and play with my son, uh, Another, just another you know, console or machine that we could play on. Uh, actually, uh, I bought Infinite Mini Golf, which is... Uh, there's basically you can create your own tracks and they you can download them and just anybody can create them so hence the name so you got all kinds of courses there's there's um i guess you can call it single player mode like a story mode not really a story mode but you can kind of pick between like tournaments and just kind of going through the tracks or uh, through the um through the courses and stuff so that's cool you can try them out um and they do have during the the single player mode you can when you're doing tournaments, you can unlock like outfits for your player and, and stuff like that. So I mean, it, it's fine. It's, it's no big deal, but it's fun. I like the the mini golf kind of uh, um, the play. And there's power ups and stuff that you can do. You can have like you know big jumps. Like there's a gap and there's a ramp, so you can like jump over that gap or go all the way around. So or just like a turbo type of a, a rocket icon that you know can shoot you up a, a kind of like a spiral um, ramp that goes up. So it's cool. It's really it's really uh. Um, it's, it's different, obviously. It's you know, it's nothing like Splatoon or you know, Minecraft and stuff like that. So it's fun. Uh, and then yeah, I am playing Splatoon too. I'm having fun with that. Um, been playing a little bit of the the story mode. Um, probably like just past like the tutorial stage or level, a little bit into the the, the next level. And then playing a lot of uh, Turf War and uh, like I mentioned before, the Salmon Run, which is pretty fun. Um, so did you play the story mode of the first game on Wii U? No, I never actually played it on the Wii U at all. I think, okay. Other than just like demos on in stores and stuff like that. So. Okay. 
yeah, I, just, I really enjoyed the first uh, single player stuff in it. Uh, you know, pretty experimental and and creative in terms of platforming. Uh, it sounds like the the story mode does a lot of that uh, well again here. Yeah. So you haven't touched it at all then on the. I haven't. No, I have not. My son's finished the story mode. He's been playing oh. online. Um, it, but I have not got a chance to get it out of his hands yet. So. Yeah. So have fun with that. And the um, I think they've only done. Well, I think they've done two Splatfests so far. I missed the first one. I think that was when it launched. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, they you know have a, a question: Are you team like the last one they did was mayonnaise or ketchup? So, and then you you pick a side, and then you go in and you fight uh, in the turf war. And you know whoever has well, actually, I guess there's a bunch of different factors on whoever wins at the end of the Splatfest. So, uh, just the first part where you where you pick you know a side that's that's one area and then when you're doing the turf war whoever has the most wins at the end of the uh at the end of the uh, session which I, I can't remember i don't know if it's like a weekend or a week that the splat fests run i don't remember if you if you ever did those at all db it's usually just a weekend that it, okay. it launches over a weekend sometimes it's only two days um you know it's a very isolated and focused time to be able to to funnel people in and through all right so yeah, so it's a popularity, and then whoever wins, and I, I, there's a third thing I think that they they factored in. I can't remember what it is right now, but uh, I guess there's a big hubbub because the popular vote was one thing last time, but and you know it got trounced by whatever the other two factors were. So yeah, this was the ketchup versus mayo uh, yeah. splat fest where mayo won, but ketchup was the dominant uh, popular vote there. Mayo won the the percentages of of wins or other types of factors that they had versus just simply the quantity of players playing. Yeah. So I, yeah, I guess the one of the, one of the gripes was that since catchup was so large that a lot of people when they go into the matches it was just catchup versus catchup. So and I guess that didn't count for anything. So I guess that was one of the big gripes. But um, that's whatever. It's just a game. So. <laughs> so and then the the newest one is. What's the newest choice between um, superpowers? Yes, flight versus invisibility. Yeah, that right. is our our choice here. But is that actually running now, or uh, no? Know. It looks like it's coming on um, maybe this weekend. Yeah, I'm trying to look here, but rather than stumble around and look, um, go ahead and keep going. I'll jump in when I find out when. Yeah, so uh, I don't know about in the first game on the Wii U one. Uh, like when you're in in the beginning when you start up the game, um, I, were you in that little hub world like that in the in the Wii U? Yes. Version yep. Okay. You always I had a wondering. you had a space to kind of go around and explore, and you know you'd go in and out of, of different stores. It's a, it's bigger this time. You know, there, there's more stores and stands. Um, you know, there's there's more options there. But yes, it's it's set up in a similar fashion. Okay, I was just wondering, just because you, you see like other players and stuff too, and their little notes and, and whatnot. So I just didn't know if that was it was like that. Uh, and then the uh, last one, of course, Zelda. I bought that and been playing basically been playing Zelda and Splatoon two most the majority of my playtime. So, uh, so how far are you in Zelda? I think we really will come a time when, since all four of us have been playing Breath of the Wild, we probably should talk about it a little bit more. But I'm curious yeah. how far you are. Um, I've, I wouldn't even know how to even explain how far I am. So I got off the Great Plateau, obviously, and I'm going across, you know, the worlds. Uh, I'm at the point where, and this is probably still pretty early, where they give you, the, I think it's like four or five spots where you have to um, either free or awaken the Guardians or something yep. like that. Yeah, you've got the, like the Great Beast type of thing. Yeah, the Great Beast, yeah. yeah. So yep. I just I had just gotten that not too not too long ago, I think sometime last week. And I've just been exploring now. I'm just going, going through and, and traveling the world, doing shrines and just fighting enemies and stuff like that. So as yep. far as like the, the main quest, that's, how, that's as far as I'm at right now. So. Yeah, it definitely scratches that kind of exploration itch for me, where I can just kind of see something over on the side and just kind of wonder, try to figure out how to get there. Can I glide there? How do I climb? Yeah, you know, and gotta, I, I've been bumping up my stamina. Uh, and I, I, that might have been a mistake, though, <laughs> now that I'm kind of exploring the world. So, Yeah, no, I, I get hit and die pretty quickly, but I can sure climb for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, and besides that, um, what was I, I was going to say something. Oh, I think I have unlocked all the. I forgot the little like tablet thing, whatever you use now. 
Uh, yep, the different coming. powers on your Sheikah slate. Yeah, I think I've unlocked all of those now because I did this last one where it was like, um, I think you, it's a camera. You can take a picture. Yep, for yeah. the memories. Yeah. 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 So I don't, I'm assuming that's the last one. I don't know, or that's all of them. We've got the I freeze one, so. the magnets, and the metal. You can move around metal stuff. So those are all the ones I have as the well. The bombs. Yeah. So and the amiibo support. Yeah. Yep. So good. Yeah, but I'm yeah I'm having a lot of fun with that game. So yeah, yeah, very fun. So yeah, but, well, sir, anything else on your playlist or for tonight? Nope, that was it for the playlist. Like I said, um, the next one that's coming out is what the uh, Mario and Rabbids. I think I might pick that one up. It looks interesting, so we'll see. I know it's kind of. Uh, I've heard a lot of that. It's X Kami, and I've only played a little bit of that on the on the 360 on the backwards compatible. Um, I think it was the first one that got released on the on the consoles. So it, it seemed all right. It seemed cool, but you know, with the Mario and you know Rabbids theme, it might I might get into it a little bit more. So we'll see. Yeah, I think it looks really fun, but I. You know, I'm a Fire Emblem person, and so I'd like some strategy, uh, strategy action as well. Yeah, and then I think the next one is the Pokémon uh, game that's coming out. I think they're yes. releasing a demo for that. Pokémon demo comes out tomorrow, I believe. Ooh, nice. So. Yeah, I'll have to download. Or not, or not, but Thursday this week. Whenever the update, right? Thursdays are the Nintendo updates. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, nope. That's that's about it. Any last words on anything or plugs for anything? No, I think the the Big change is the change in nights and moving off of, of Mondays into Tuesdays. Uh, you know, that will still be our topic show. And sometimes our topics will be tight and focused and sometimes we'll, we'll ramble and navel gaze, but hopefully not be too depressing about the state of any one council or the other. Uh, and Thursdays will be our, our quick and fast uh, lightning news show. So it's uh, good to keep the network up and moving and, you know, I think we've got a lot to talk about and some good perspectives here from the four of us and anybody else that's interested in coming on board. Yeah, yeah we gotta we gotta get some positive here on these next few shows. <laughs> it's kinda of been Debbie Downer lately. <laughs> that's fine. Sometimes we gotta do that. Yeah. We'll we'll you know break it down and you know bring it back up. So that's fine. Uh, so yeah, like you mentioned, like Debbie mentioned, you know, Tuesdays is our show now, so uh, come back next week for that. Uh, third Wednesdays is once again uh, Dark Hypothesis, uh, the Dark Matters uh, show with uh, Zeus and Dave. And then Thursdays is our sh uh, new show, E2KG and 30, which we should have one this this week, I believe. And uh, that's about it. Uh, so on behalf of myself, Osiris Prime, and Mr. DBQ Hams, we will see you next time. Ha 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 ha!